Welcome to ESS 101W, Walking for Fitness. I'm Dana Leeling, your instructor. I've been a runner for 41 years. This class is Walking for Fitness. The core of this class is walking, and that's where you should start. Walking is the start to building a base for aerobic fitness. And this class will help you build that base. At the center of the class, we'll be walking a mile a day, at least five days a week. By walking a mile a day, at least five days per week, you'll put in five miles a week. And you'll begin to build some cardiovascular fitness and some cardiovascular endurance. Now, if you are medically fit and healthy and wish to jog or run your mile, that's all right. But the class is focused on walking a mile a day. The class is designed as an introduction to cardiovascular fitness. When you walk, you should walk in a safe place. This class is designed to be accomplished where you live. Wherever you live, you can walk in that place. And that way, you'll be safe and secure, and you can continue the class during the term. I'm a runner, and I tend to run along the road. This is not that safe a place to be. You can see here there's a lot of traffic. This is a... Week, uh, weekday evening. It's also the end of the month, and so there's unusually heavy traffic on the road. I'm aware of the traffic, and the traffic is aware of me. In many cases, we actually know each other. But my recommendation would be that you find a safe place to walk, a safe place to do your mile. It might be down at the local ball field or at a track. You could do it on a causeway somewhere or, depending where you live, on a loop. The loop around Chamorro Lagoon in Yap is almost exactly a mile. Slightly more by a small amount. So find a safe place to do your mile and uh, log that mile. The way you will be documenting that you walked your mile will be to use a fitness app of your choice. You can use any fitness app you want. In a separate video, I will be looking at some of the options you might have. Some phones already come with a fitness app. You're looking for an app, however, that includes time, distance, and a map of your route. That'll be important to documenting that you accomplished the one mile walk. You'll walk one mile, five days, during the week, week starting on Sunday and ending on Saturday, you pick what days you want to do your one-mile walks on. The uh, apps will require having a GPS-enabled smartphone. You'll have to take your phone with you to document your miles. Do make sure your battery is fully charged before you go out on your one-mile walk. When you're done, you'll be able to use a screenshot of your app with it showing me the distance and where you walked uh, and uh, save that to your phone. Each week I'll have you upload your five screenshots of your distance and your map of where you uh, where you walked. Uploading can be a challenge for many students here in the FSM. Limited bandwidth, uh, and home ADSL, some islands having connections that are overloaded. The one place I know that people can manage to get images uploaded to is in Facebook. So we'll actually use a closed Facebook group, a private group for the class, for you to upload your pictures. This will work particularly well because Facebook is set up such that if you upload five images and only five, it will just show you all five at one time. It won't have a plus to show you the extra pictures. 
So that will work optimally for our class where you'll be uploading these five images. So once a week you'll have to upload your five images and I'll again I'll be covering some of that in a separate video looking at apps on phones and how to upload and those sorts of features. The course will also include some readings. It'll include other information. It'll have some quizzes on some of the information. But uh, they will all be in Schoology. There'll be links to the information that's provided. Uh, links to either articles to read, possibly videos to watch, information to gather. Uh, and these will sometimes, as I say, appear in quizzes just so you have some background knowledge on fitness and the cardiovascular system and some of the benefits of being physically active. My own background is, as I mentioned, is as a runner. And as I noted, I've been running for 41 years now. And so I do believe I'll be able to help you and advise you and help you sort things out as you do your walking. One of the key things you'll need to learn to do is to listen to your body. Your body is going to tell you whether or not you're able to walk or what when you might need to maybe take one day off. Days of rest are important when you're building up new muscle. That's why you're, we're only shooting for five days of walking per week. Days to recover are important too. I think I'll be able to share with you and teach you some of the things that I've learned over my decades of running and that will help you become fit, stay fit, stay healthy, and stay strong. There are many things that will be covered during this course. You'll learn some things about anatomy and physiology so that you know when something hurts, what that place might be called. And this will be framed in the... Uh, terminology of the that of walkers and runners, uh, things that you can understand. So, for example, a pain below the knee, usually due to patellar tibular syndrome, that is a muscular problem that's uh, an aggravated uh, lack of tracking in the kneecap. And the muscular problem is actually not down at the knee, oddly enough, but up in the inner thigh. A muscle known as a VMO, short for a Vestis medulla oblongata, don't worry about the longer name. It's a muscle in the inner thigh that, that if it's weak, your knee doesn't track, and that can cause this patellar tibular syndrome. That's another idea you'll learn in this course. The place that hurts is not necessarily the place where the problem or solution to the problem lies, especially when it comes to muscular pains. Sometimes a muscular pain is because some other muscle is weak and not doing its job. These are some of the things I'll be able to share with you during the term and help you sort out as you do your walking. If, if, why does this hurt? And also to learn which things are just muscles that are naturally sore because you're working them out more and which things may be more serious. Uh, in general, most of the aches and pains we feel as a beginning walker or a beginning runner are muscles that aren't yet strong enough to handle the load and so we're experiencing some soreness, some stiffness, or possibly uh, some overuse um, injuries of some sort. So we'll watch out for those sorts of things. And I think I'll be able to help you, uh, especially individually, on sorting out what might be going on. You'll need to take this at your own pace. You'll need to walk at a pace that's appropriate for you and your health. Um, the FSM has a epidemic of uh, non-communicable disease issues. We'll be touching on some of those, but high blood pressure, diabetes, and a whole range of other issues, most of which are related to obesity. And indeed, if you are overweight, you do want to take it easy. You don't want to push too hard. You can walk, but you should try to 
move into it maybe more slowly, uh, to walk more gently and so that your muscles and your joints have time to adjust to the new demands on them. Uh, and this will be something, again, we'll look at. We'll look at weight and body mass index. For some, we may be able to look at uh, body fat if you have access to someone who has a body fat monitor. But for the most part, we'll have to just go by whatever you have where you are right now. The course doesn't have a textbook, as I noted. In Schoology, there'll be links to things to read or videos to watch, and that's how information will be conveyed to, to it. I'll link the syllabus down below and the calendar below. Though again, the core to the calendar is to accomplish a mile a day, five days a week. Um, this particular video is just background video, and I, I hope it didn't make you too, too dizzy. I don't have gyro stabilization on my camera. Uh, but I thought I'd show you some of the sights and sounds that I see when I'm running. Well, well not the sounds, but the sights. Walking and running are special sports. They get you outside. They get you into contact with the world around you. Uh, I find that I really enjoy, uh, in my case, the, the running. You're starting with walking, which is good, because it does get me outside into the community. These are activities that are not practiced inside a gym or a stadium or a, a basketball court. And their activities, you can stop and greet people and talk to them and keep on going. They are inherently social activities. They are very, very different in that respect from almost every other sport. So I experience a, a real joy when I'm outside, seeing things, seeing people I know, having a chance to stop occasionally and chat with them, uh, seeing people pass by, I know. And I hope that you'll find the same when you do your walking where you are. This class is purely online, and you'll be doing it from the safety of where you live. So I do want to welcome you to ESS 101W, Walking for Fitness. And please, if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me and ask. I'm happy to answer whatever questions I can. I have some familiarity, some familiarity with uh, running, at least, on the other islands of the FSM. So I, I might not know your particular area, but I think I can still provide useful and good advice. So welcome to the class, and thank you for joining.